Hello, in this chapter we will be setting up mediator for our application. But before starting today's session, we need to make one small fix in our project that we created in our previous session. If you remember, we set up the target framework of all class library projects to .NET Standard 2.1. But instead of that, let us set it to .NET 5.0. Make this change in all these three class library projects. As going forward, this will be the future and recommendation. And if you are using Visual Studio 2019 version 16.9.0 or higher than that, then you need not to do it manually, as Visual Studio itself will create class library with target framework NET 5.0. You can read more about it on the link provided in the description. With this fix in place, let us start with Mediator. This is an official GitHub page and I will put link in the description. Mediator is basically an in-process messaging package. It has two kind of message dispatchers. Request response message which are dispatched to single handler and notification message which are dispatched to multiple handlers. In this session, we will be focusing on request response. To work with mediator, we generally need three classes. Request class, response class, and the handler class. Out of these three classes, this response class is optional. If you don't want to return anything from handler or if your handler is returning primitive types like integer string, then in that case, this response class will not be present. Note that we have to derive our request class from I request interface, which is provided by mediator library. And here we need to mention what is the response type or return type. Same way, we need to implement I request handler in our handler class. And the first parameter over here is request type and second parameter is response type. This I request handler interface defines single method handle which we need to implement over here. So basically handle method will be responsible to handle your request to execute some business logic and to return the response. Once these three classes are in place, we can make call from client like this using send method of mediator. You can see that in send method, I am passing object of get employee by id request. And this is how send method will know to which handler it should call. Mediator will automatically find out the handler which has input parameter of same type. Now let us try this in our project. In our solution, you can see that there are multiple projects. We will set up mediator in our application layer. So let us first install mediator package to this layer. Also install this second one, dependency injection. Now let us add one folder in our application to hold request response and handler classes. I will name it get user by id. So I want to write this use case get user by id and all request response and handler classes will go inside this folder. So let us create request class. Get user by id request. Now let us create response class. get user by id response 
and create handler class. Let us make them public. Now our request class should derive from I request. And here we need to specify a return type. I want to fetch user by ID. So obviously I need to pass ID. So I'll need property to hold that information. Now let us go to response class. It will be returning us simply id and name now let us go to handler we need to implement i request handler request type response type let us implement it it will insert handle method over here just create one user object and return it let us make it async this is just dummy implementation to understand the concept we may need to delete this folder it may not be useful in our real application now we need to configure mediator to do this we need to add one line of code in configure service method of startup class but in our case we installed mediator package in our application project and all request response and handler classes are in application project so i don't want to do setting in this api project ideally all dependencies of application project should get resolved in this project itself and fortunately, we can achieve it by writing an extension method for service collection inside the application layer itself. And then we can call this extension method from configure service method of startup class. To do this, let us add static class dependency injection here in the application layer. This class will be responsible to resolve all dependencies of application layer. So let us make this class static and add extension method add application in this class. You can see that this is extension method for I service collection. Let us fix this. This extension method returns service collection itself. Over here in this service collection, we are adding our mediator support. This one line of code configures mediator for us. It tells mediator that scan this current assembly to get our request and request handler classes. If you are wondering what is this service collection, then in short, this service collection holds all dependencies which is then used by ASP.NET dependency injection resolver to resolve the dependencies. You can learn more about it in the link provided below. Now let us call this extension method from configure service method of startup class of API project. If you remember, we already added reference of application project in our API project. This call will not be a problem. Now we want to call this handler from our controller.
which resides in our API project. So let us quickly add users controller in controller folder. And let us derive it from controller base. Also put few attribute over here. Fine, then we will need mediator object to make calls. So we need to inject mediator in this controller. But in our case, we haven't installed mediator package in API project and it is in application project. So we can't use default constructor injection over here. So to get this object, we need to write code something like this. Let us fix this. Pay attention to this using statement because Visual Studio may not suggest over here. Now let us add get action method as this is get user by id method we need to pass id in the route let us fix this here we are specifying that the value to this variable should come from route now let us create request object using this id this is our request class so we can create request object like this then let us make call to handler using send method of mediator. Let us put breakpoints and debug it. Now you can see this endpoint on the swagger. Just try it out. Make the call. It's hitting our action method. We are getting the ID, then we are creating request object and then we are passing this request object to send method. So send method will get wired up with the handler which has input parameter of get user by ID request type. So it is coming to this handler. It will execute this code and will return this data and that data we are passing to the response. That's great. We just set up the mediator. However, I would like to refactor this code a little bit. You can see that there is a lot of code that we may need to repeat in every controller. Like this mediator dependency, then these attributes. So instead of this, what we can do, we can create one base controller and we can derive this controller from our base controller and we can put all repetitive code inside that base control. Generally, to put such common code, we can create folder seed work. You can imagine seed work as a very tiny framework. You can name this folder as common, shared, shared kernel, it doesn't matter. Let us create Orion base controller in this folder. and derive this controller from controller base. Move all this stuff over here. You may notice that this mediator property is declared as protected. This I intentionally kept protected as we wanted to move it to base class and it should be accessible from derived class. Let us derive this class from our custom base controller.
let us debug once again to validate if everything is fine we are getting proper data this custom based class will be useful for us to put few more things that we will see in future videos now as we just configured mediator and it's working fine let us try to find out what are the advantages of using mediator firstly we separated our top level framework that is our api project with our business logic that is our application project you may argue that this is also possible without using mediator but one another advantage here you can see that in real life if my controller has 10 action methods and that 10 action methods needs 10 different dependencies then i need to inject all that dependencies in the constructor of the controller so then first 20 25 line of code is just to inject the dependencies which we have solved using mediator there is no injection in our constructor secondly we have achieved single responsibility principle by nicely separating our requests, handlers and response. What do you feel about mediator? If you can see any other advantages or disadvantages, please let me know in the comments. If you find this content useful, please like and subscribe. If you wish to receive notifications whenever a new episode is published, then do not forget to hit the bell icon and click all in that pop-up. Thank you.